13th. The book is still my voice. Marlowa. Marlowa. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jay and today I am here with part 3 of my June wrap up. So without further ado, let us get started! Wah! The 13th book that I read for the month of June is These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner and I ended up giving this book a 3.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. This book follows Tarver who is a very well respected major in the military and he grew up with nothing. Lilac LaRue is the daughter of the wealthiest man in the universe. They end up meeting at a party and Tarver approaches Lilac without knowing anything about her status or wealth. He soon discovers that she isn't as sweet as he thought she was and they end up despising each other. Suddenly her father's ship, the Icarus, crashes and lands on this planet that nobody has really heard of. And Tarver and Lilac have to come to terms with the fact that they are the sole survivors of this crash and they need to work together in order to get off this planet. The book is told from a dual perspective and I really liked how the characters went from basically hating each other to like this slow burning love. There was absolutely no insta love. Thank the lord because y'all know your girl. She ain't about that insta love. I really liked being able to see inside both characters minds and how they would play it off that they didn't have feelings for each other, but as a reader you knew they did. I enjoyed Lilac's character, although at times her bitchiness towards Tarver really irritated me, although like at times it was justifiable. Other times I was like, stop it, lady. I loved watching her grow and develop as the story went on, and I really liked being able to see inside her mind and how she came to terms with certain things that occurred in the story. I definitely enjoyed Tarver's voice more than Lilac's, and I thought he was super witty and funny, and I loved his comebacks to Lilac. Some of the things that he said had me burst out laughing, so I really enjoyed him as a character. I think that the world building in this book wasn't as strong as I wanted it to be. I think I wanted a lot more backstory on the unknown planet that I didn't get. Also, I'm kind of confused with the ending. I'm assuming that's going to be covered more in the next two books of the trilogy, but I didn't fully understand what happened. But, you know, maybe if I pick up the next two books, I'll understand. I don't know. I think that the writing was really well done in this book. I think it flowed really nicely and I really liked how the chapters were so small so it didn't feel like I was reading a million pages per chapter and I didn't get bored very easily at all. The 14th book that I read for the month of June is Dark Companion by Marta Acosta and I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows a girl named Jane Williams and she has been jumping from foster home to foster home since the age of eight. She is provided with this opportunity to attend Birch Grove Academy, which is an elite school for all girls. The offer is to attend the school on full scholarship, so obviously she accepts. And when she arrives, she basically receives everything she could ever dream of, a roof over her head, living expenses, food paid for, new wardrobe, basically anything she could ever want. Jane soon discovers that things at Birch Grove may not be as perfect as she thought they were and something sinister may be going on. I enjoyed Jane as a main character for the most part, but I think she was a very wishy-washy character. She was very strong-willed and didn't really let anybody push her around. She stood up for herself and what she believed in for like half the book and then as soon as a boy of interest came into the picture, she kind of just turned to a pile of mush. And it was like, where did... Jane go, I don't understand. All of a sudden it was, everything was about this boy because he said that he needed her and wanted her and it was just like, why? Like, girl, you were so independent and now all of a sudden you're not. And it just bothered me. I just wish that she had stayed feisty Jane for the whole book. It also bothered me how judgmental Jane was to her friend Wild. She was pretty hypocritical with the things that she was saying about her. But I did like how she was still trying to help Wild with her situation. That was a nice aspect to read of the book and you could tell that she really did care about her. Mary Jane, 100% my favorite character. I thought she was so funny. Her sarcasm and everything to do with her made me smile like an idiot. Anytime, any scene she was in, I was so happy. And her poems were hilarious. They were like obviously supposed to be bad, which made them even funnier. I also really liked Jack. I thought he was adorable and I loved how he kept calling Jane like pixie and halfling and things like that. I just thought it was really cute. And Lucky really irritated me. I wanted to punch him in the face, 
so badly. I didn't understand why Jane was like bending over backwards for him. Because it was so obvious he didn't care about her. And I just found him to be extremely childish and self-centered and I just, I didn't like him at all. I was able to call the like big birch grove secret pretty early in the book, except there was some plot twists that I wasn't able to call later on in the book, so that was nice, but the big secret was really obvious right from the beginning. The next five books are all books that I read for the TBR Takedown 4.0. So I'll have like my full thought video up in a card if you want to check them out. I'm just going to give you the star ratings that I gave just to make things go quicker. 15th, 16th, 17th books are all from the same trilogy, and it is the Selection series from Kira Cass, and it is the Selection, the Elite, and the one, and I gave each of these books a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The 18th book is The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater, and I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The 19th book is The Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. I gave this a 4.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. So again, if you guys want to see my full thoughts on any of those 5 books, then there's a card and y'all can check that out. The 20th book that I read for the month of June is Hashtag Scandal by Sarah Ockler. And I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Lucy, who has been in love with Cole for four years. And on the night of her senior prom, she finally kisses him. The only problem is, is that Cole is her best friend Ellie's boyfriend. When pictures of the prom's after party start showing up on Facebook for a spot on misdemeanors hashtag scandal page, including pictures of her and Cole kissing, she has to figure out who posted the pictures to her profile, how to win her best friend back, and also what to do about her feelings towards Cole. I loved Lucy as a character. I thought her humor was so amazing. I liked how she was able to stand up for herself when things were going wrong, and I like how she also had her moments of weakness, but she was always able to pull herself back together and move on from it. I don't really know how I feel about Cole because he wasn't really in the book or the story that much. He would kind of just pop in randomly from time to time and I wasn't really invested in the romance at all because before the book even started Lucy was already obsessed with him so it wasn't like you developed with the romance if that makes sense. It just was already there. I honestly wanted Lucy and Franklin to end up together. I was really upset when it didn't happen so just saying. I also really liked Lucy's relationship with her sister and I liked how it developed throughout the story. I think that the author did a really good job with talking about topics that are sensitive like social media and slut shaming and things like that and I was able to call who Miss Demeanor was and who stole the phone and put the pictures up pretty early in the book but it was still really enjoyable. It was very quick to read and I would recommend it if you're into a contemporary that's really fast. The 21st book that I read for the month of June is The Dinner by Herman Koch and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. I didn't really enjoy it that much. I was really excited to read it because Peter read it from Peter Likes Books and I was like, I love Peter so I'll probably love the book too. No, I thought it was really boring and slow and it just wasn't my style of writing. It follows two brothers and their wives and they meet at this very fancy restaurant in Amsterdam and they need to discuss something that occurred occurred between their two 15 year old sons and what they are going to do about it. I found the book very frustrating. Although it was enjoyable at times, the vague writing really made me angry because I wanted to know everything about the characters and I felt like I wasn't getting any backstory or anything like that. The author did it on purpose and like the whole point of the book is that it's vague, but it just drove me insane. I did not like any of the characters, they were all terrible people, and I didn't connect with any of them. I really liked how the story was like broken up into the courses of the meal, I thought that was really cool. And I liked the first half of the book, I thought it was very engaging and I was really interested in what the crime was, but once the crime was told, I think that it slowed down way too much. And for the last like a hundred or so pages, I was so bored with the story that I had to put it down multiple times. The 22nd book that I read for the month of June is Me, the Missing and the Dead by Jenny Valentine. And this book follows Lucas Swain, whose father has been missing without a trace for the past five years. He's been wondering for the past five years why his dad left and his family has never been able to find any answers. That's when he meets a little old lady named Violet Park 
who is actually in an urn, and he is convinced that she is trying to communicate with him in order to help him find his dad. I ended up giving this book a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I thought that most of the characters were really bland. I didn't like them, I didn't connect with Lucas at all, and his girlfriend Martha just was boring to me. I liked Pansy and Norman, who are Lucas's grandparents. I thought they were pretty cute. Pansy was hilarious. She was very sassy for a little old lady. And Norman had me smiling for most of the book when he was in it. And I really liked his relationship with Lucas's younger brother, Jed, who was absolutely adorable. Lucas's sister, Mercy, and his mom, Nikki, really bothered me throughout the story. I think they were very self-centered and rude and I just I didn't like reading about them. I did think that the plot was a very interesting concept, although I think the pacing was a little too slow for my liking. I did really like the ending though because I did not see it coming whatsoever. And also there was like a huge focus on like family relationships and finding yourself kind of thing. So that was nice to read. Alright guys, so that was the 22 books total that I read for the month of June. If you want to check out part one or part two of the wrap-up, I'll have a card for both of them, so feel free to check that out if you want. I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Hashtag scandal? Would it be hashtag scandal or would it just be scandal? I don't I'm gonna say hashtag. Mm, I don't know. Me, myself, and... No, that's not... No. Oh my god. Me, the missing, and the dead. Me, the missing, and the dead. Me, the missing, and the dead.